So now the question is, well, what, what exactly is a server? Um, okay. Well, a server you can actually think of is the physical hardware itself, the box, and then the server operating system. Now, both are designed for performance, to per performance, for security, for redundancy. Uh, they're, they're both designed with these features in mind to be scalable, um, uh, to perform and to serve a lot of different roles and more than one user, more than a couple users. That's what a server is really a system. Okay, it's just not a box you go out and buy, but rather it's a combination of the, the computer and the software that makes it a server. And then deciding what role that server is going to have in your business. Uh, servers will tend to have what's called a server class central processing unit, or CPU. For example, Intel has the, the Xenon chip, and then uh, AMD has the uh, Operton chips. Uh, both now are 64-bit, and some of you might be scratching your head, okay, 64-bit. That basically means it's going to be able to address way, way more memory than the current 32-bit chips out there. Um, so, and of course, you know, 4 gigabytes of memory might be enough for you today, but, you know, down the road you may need, you know, 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes of memory. And... You're kind of stuck there around the 4 gigabyte range, uh, generally speaking, if you uh, have a 32-bit operating system. But these new server operating systems and, and Vista is now uh, scaled up to 64-bit. Uh, yeah, XP Pro had a 64-bit. I never met a soul that used it. Uh, never met a soul that used the 64-bit version of XP Pro. But um, uh, I think you're you're seeing a lot of people picking up. You know, Vista is starting to uptake. There is a 64-bit version of that. Windows Ser uh, Server 2008 is available in 32-bit and 64-bit. Uh, Windows Small Business Server 2008 will be available only in 64-bit. Um, <clears throat> so these pr these uh, processors are, are designed for that in mind. Uh, they tend to uh, have different or I should say additional instructions to them that are related to the various housekeeping tasks the server is required to do and they can just handle a higher utilization load that's what they're designed for a higher performance they also will generally come with a particular kind of memory called ECC and that stands for error correcting um, uh, yeah let's see it's error correcting uh, memory and error correcting memory uh, is going to basically test the data coming in and out and making sure that it is uh, that it's solid. So it, that's a little bit more expensive than your typical RAM chips in a uh, in a in a PC, desktop PC. <clears throat> and and then they're also going to have a more sophisticated disk subsystem or hard drives. Uh, a lot of times you'll hear the term RAID. Well, what does RAID stand for? It stands for redundant array of inexpensive disks. And there's different versions of them. We're just going to talk about the more common ones. Uh, first is RAID level 0. And what that does is it takes a pair of drives, hard disks, equally matched in size, and it saves a portion of the data each time it writes to both disks at the same time. And so that makes it faster because you're getting twi you know, a lot more throughput. Now the problem with RAID 0 is, of course, if one of the drives fail, uh, you've lost all your data. Again, they also refer to that as a strike drive as well. So if you have two 250 gig drives, essentially it's going to appear as one 250 gig drive uh, that you're writing to, but the data gets written a little bit to each one. And then there's RAID Level 1. Now RAID Level 1 is uh, much more secure. It's actually a mirror. You take one drive and as, as, as it's being written to the data, same data is being simultaneously uh, simultaneously written to the other. And so if you have a failure of your hard drive rather than being down until it's replaced, um, a lot of times it can be hot swapped. You can take the bad drive out, rebuild the mirror, and off you go. But you didn't have the downtime that you would have uh, in a uh, RAID level one, uh, zero <clears throat> environment. 
Um, and then there's RAID level 5, which is three disks or more that uh, basically uh, looks as like the one large drive. But you do have a level of redundancy um, in, in case one of the disks go bad. Uh, then there's RAID level uh, uh, 6, there's RAID level um, 15. So there's, there's different RAID levels, but the most common I've run into in the field is generally going to be RAID level 1, which is mirrored, because that's... Uh, uh, more for redundancy and safety and eliminate the downtime or RAID level 1. Uh, although RAID level uh, 1 plus 0, or we call it RAID level 10, uh, is also becoming uh, more popular out in the field. Uh, servers are generally going to have, generally have a, uh, a backup solution to them, uh, in whether it's tape or USB. Um, uh, or online, or it's going to connect to what's called a, a NAS. Uh, and a NAS is a uh, uh, network accessible uh, or network attached storage device. And that can be like a, an array of disks with its own controller, and uh, it looks like a shared drive to the rest of the network. But generally speaking, the, the uh, server should have some type of backup solution. Um, now, it doesn't necessarily come with the operating system. Yeah, Windows has a backup. <clears throat> but it's not really designed to back up like your SQL database or your Exchange server. Now, the one that ships with Small Business Server, at least the 2003 version, uh, does. And uh, it, it, it does so very, very well. But uh, we generally recommend a product called uh, Shadow Protect Server um, uh, from a company called StorageCraft. Uh, we like it. We use it here. Uh, and particularly, uh, it, it's, it's very fast at backing up. It only changes the little bits of information that, uh, that changed in an entire for, uh, document. For example, let's say you have a document that's a, a megabyte in size. You change just a few words of that. So it backs up on the, 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 the very level of the hard drive, all the bits and bytes, only those parts you change rather than the entire document each time. So it's very efficient in the way it, it uh, handles things. But there are some excellent uh, backup applications and you may consider uh, online backup on just backup your data into the, into the cloud so to speak. And that's also becoming more and more and more attractive to small business because then you don't really have to worry about uh, the physical media as much. Um, so that's kind of the hardware side of the server. <clears throat> and uh, as far as the physical box themselves, you can get them in a tower. You can get them in, I call them a pizza box computer, but maybe you've seen them. They're very thin. Uh, they, they mount in a rack. And that, that's called like 1U, 2U. Uh, that's the thickness, 1 unit, 2 unit, etc. Um, and then there's another type of server chassis called a blade uh, server. And blades basically allow you to, uh, for servers to share common components such as fans, cooling supplies, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, essentially is what a blade is. Uh, so there's, there's different kinds of hardware, but at the end of the day, that's the physical box. So